Hi, 103. So in this video, I'm going to be constructing the octahedron. And it gets its name from the fact that it has eight faces that come together to construct this figure. Each of those eight faces are equilateral triangles, so all of the edges are going to be the same measure. And you can see what I've done here is on every face, I've labeled it with a number, one through eight. And in each of the um, angles of these triangles on every face, I've labeled the degree measure, which in this case, it's 60 degrees in every angle. Just like with the tetrahedron and the icosahedron, which are also made up of equilateral triangles. So on each tab where it says glue under, that's basically telling us that we need to fold that piece under um, an adjacent um, an adjacent face, all right? So what I did to get started is not only did I label all of these pieces, but I cut out along the solid line, the solid outline, and then I pre-folded along every dotted line. So go ahead and do that before you finish the video so that you can keep up with me as I go, okay? So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start from one edge. I'm gonna take this glue under tab, and I'm just going to arrange it to where it sits right under an adjacent side. I've got glue under, and I'm just folding it underneath the next face right, of the, of the um, octahedron. So instead of using glue, I'm using tape just because it's so fast. You don't have to wait for anything to dry. So I'm just gonna attach that. And already you can see that the base, just by gluing one of these uh, triangular faces to another one, you can see I've started to make the bottom pyramid that forms uh, the bottom half of this octahedron. So I'm gonna continue doing that. Anywhere I see glue under, it means it's just gonna hide underneath an adjacent face, all right? So just, you're gonna get another piece of tape, tape those together, and you can see now, not only do I have the bottom pyramid that's already been formed, I now have the majority of the top pyramid ready to go. We're just gonna keep taping anywhere it says glue under, fold that tab under the adjacent face and glue it in place. It doesn't need to be perfect, not even close. We just need to be able to see what's going on at these vertices with the internal angle sum, all right? That's uh, the reason why I label every single angle. Even when we get up into the dodecahedron and we get into the icosahedron, which have 12 and 20 faces, I still labeled every angle so that we would be able to talk about this internal angle sum. This is how we determine how many platonic solids there can possibly be. It's by using that internal angle sum and keeping it less than 360. So let's, let's do the math on this. Right? The cool thing about platonic solids is that every face is the same. So um, face one looks exactly like face six, looks exactly like um, face two. It's an equilateral triangle, 60 degree angle measures, and all of the edges are the same length. So what I can do is I can say every vertex is also the same here. So I've got a vertex with what looks like one, two, six, and seven meeting here. Those faces are meeting at this vertex. That's four equilateral triangles meeting at a vertex. Well, I could just throw this up and randomly select another vertex, right? And it <laughs> happened to be the same one, so let me kind of rotate again. I could select another vertex. This is the four, five, six, seven vertex. And what you're gonna notice is it still has four equilateral triangles meeting at that vertex. All of the vertices are the same, just like all of the faces are the same, just like all of the edges have the same length. So when I wanna go to uh, calculate that internal angle sum and see what is the angle sum at a vertex on here, I can choose any one that I want because they're all the same. So I'm just gonna zoom in on this one and it happens to be the four, five, six, seven vertex. And I'm just adding up the angles here. I'm adding up 60 plus 60 plus 60 plus 60. That's four 60s being added together, which gives us an internal angle sum of 240 degrees. So with that internal angle sum of 240 degrees, it's perfectly valid, right? It's still less than 360 degrees. If we were to hit 360 degrees, that would mean we no longer have this nice, uh, 3D figure, the figure would lay flat. The sheet of paper would not be able to fold in, right? 
So that was the construction of the octahedron, and here is the octahedron. 